Welcome, I'm Margaret Wakefield Lister. I'm president of the Vermilion Historical Society. Tonight's program is going to be videotaped, so please silence or turn off your cell phone. We are updating our mailing list, and if you would like to be notified of future meetings and programs, please sign the sheet being passed around. Check out right here, I'll be passing it around. If you signed up last month, you don't need to do it again. Membership forms are on the front table down at the end there. And our presenter tonight is Mary Lynn Myers Hamas. Mary Lynn is a 1970 graduate of Vermilion High School and longtime resident of Vermilion. She has been collecting Vermilion memorabilia since she was four years old. Please welcome Mary Lynn. Okay, thank you all for coming. I appreciate it. I wasn't sure if the seats would all be empty. Mm -hmm. I was born 1951, 1951, I was born, I grew up in Alberta Beach, and I have been collecting since I've been about four or five. Figurines, greeting cards, postcards, you name it, I squirreled it away in a shoebox under my bed closet. <laughs> I'm a true little hoarder, <laughs> and at this stage in my life, I'm more selective. And I can still clean. I have shelves, I have boxes and albums, but not like when I was a kid. Okay, on the screen, this is my grandfather, Herbert Charles Myers Sr. And he was born in Massillon, 1884. And he and my grandmother lived in the house behind the library with the three-sided porch. He was an optometrist and a jeweler. His main office was in the old arcade in Cleveland, and he worked from 10 to 5. Then when he came home, he had office hours in the house, very small little office, and that was from 7, 7 to 9.30. And I remember Mrs. Maurer from Maurer Weichel. She told me he gave her her first pair of glasses. Said it was the best pair she ever had. My mother and my father, Marguerite and Herbert. My mom was the clerk of court. And that's my mom and I. Um, the B and D studio is on this side now, and the Silly Goose is on the other side. There's a narrow staircase that goes up. It used to be Ludlow's studio, and after Ludlow moved behind Hart's drugstore, that area, it was a dance studio with Miss Lily, tap, and ballet. I found out of both of them. <laughs> okay, mom was Ted Wakefield's secretary a short time because I was on the way. And she was also, for Louis Rao, she was his secretary at the town hall, 1962, then when the court, municipal court, was established. Judge Ryan appointed her as clerk. And back then there was only two employees, my mom and Carol Feisley. She ran the whole shebang. Okay, then the court grew and more were hired. Rich's sister, Barb, is not in the picture, but she should be, I don't know why. Maybe she was absent that day, but she filled my mom's shoes. When my mom retired, she was the head clerk. Okay, and those are some of the ads from the program. The 1937 program, and you're welcome to look at this stuff. I know some of you have, but it's full of long gone places. Uh, 
Bunny's place turned into a Liberty Tavern. The Okagi, I don't know if anyone remembers Jack Bassbinder, that was his folks' restaurant. And more, let's see, which is that, oh, no, that's more from the program, okay, that's Riches, that's your print shop. And Wakefield Brass, I think everybody remembers Wakefield Brass. Was it a 3.30 whistle, closing time? No, five o'clock. Five o'clock, I don't, I just remember a whistle. I think the factory did get out at 3.30. Was it 3.30? <laughs> Could we had to stay longer. Oh, goodness. Get up here. He needs to take a <laughs> Angle Breeze. That's the Main Street office now where Paul Cole was. And Bulbers is now the parking lot, and I've enjoyed it many times. Instead of trying to par instead of trying to parallel park, it's much easier. Okay, in the high times, this is my dad's senior log, and there's some old familiar faces and not familiar, but a lot of the faculty in 1934 and his when he graduated. A lot of the faculty was still in place at the high school when I was there. Mary Chadwick, she was language. Everybody remembers Mary, I think. And the, yeah, and maintenance. And Willis Gebhardt. Gibby. Mr. Gibby. He was substitute. Okay, Charter Days was big, and we had a go-kart, so my dad put tomato steaks on it, he took a throw from a chair in the living room, and said, do you want to be in the parade? <laughs> so my friend and I decided, oh yeah. I don't think you can tell me, how fast did that go, about 10 miles an hour? But the top, can you go down? <coughs> the top left corner, I think, is Trixie Bartlett and Hubie Bartlett. And next to them, Bill Haber. He was in maintenance at the high school. But that was a fun day. My mom made us mother and daughter outfits. And I was a big shot. <laughs> okay, and I have to. Charter Day plates. Most of what you see here is from my grandparents and my mother's and father's. Uh, 1970, my grandma passed away in the house behind the library. I wanted everything. And my mom kept saying, what are you gonna do with it? Where are you gonna put it? Well, by gosh, I found places for a lot of it. This was at my mom's. Genuine plate, and the sesquicennial, this program. Again, there's a lot of ads, businesses that no longer exist. And more ads. Medicine shop, I think we all remember Carlton Lapp. Good guy. And Howard Weichel. These things my parents, they used. Uh, the timer, fan timer. I took that off her wall. There's a little mirror from Howard Weichel. And the ever loving bottle that I hear going for top dollar on eBay. <laughs> I don't do eBay. But I got a tickled at the hot pad when I was, after she passed, and I was cleaning her house out. 
and I saw this ratty coat bed, or hot bed, and I almost pitched it until I saw the back, and I thought, no, this is a keeper. <laughs> so I think they were established in 1909. Where was that located? Yeah, South Street. Adjacent to South Street School. Oh, okay. South South Street. Street. Oh, okay. South South yeah. Building's yeah. still there. Yeah. Bill Johnson lives in it. It was. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Oh, really? Wow. You didn't say the name Kelly, but I'm sure. Okay, well, this this one's just Mauer. Yeah, this one's just Mauer, so that's that would be that's, older. Yes. Yeah, that would. This might have been always Mauer. This might have been my mother's mother's. <laughs> that's why it's in such rough shape. Yeah, because it was Mauer. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Hey, 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 no, right in that area. No, this is on um, oh, uh, that's... Main Street and oh, you got Brummers. Angle Bridge. Yeah, Mumbers. <coughs> Brummers on the left and um, Baumhart's store, oh, store on the right. Okay. The Fisher's apartment store. And I was excited. I saw Wolf Electric. Yeah, it became Fisher's after um, Angle Bridge. <coughs> okay, nickel plate. Who doesn't remember the smoke in their whistle? This is not an old mug, uh, maybe from the 80s, 90s, but it's a, just a reminder of the train that ran through Vermilion and tickled the kids. I think it tickled everybody, but I love trains. Businessmen took it every mm -hmm. Okay, I've got some artifacts. These were found along the Vermilion River out by L and M Towing on Ray Delafield's property. I also have some turtle rocks that were given to us years ago that came from Mill Hollow. And then the postcard. They're all around town. I'm sure people have probably seen them. Crystal Beach. Don't remember Liberty Street looking like that. <laughs> Rich, can you describe that um, the businesses in that one? On, on the right, where Hart's drugstore was, it was split in two until uh, Hart's bought it. And once one side was a uh, bar, a saloon, wagon. I don't know who was on the other side. Then the Pelton McGraw. General store was on the left hand side and that big building you see there. That's not that's similar to the where the bank or where the city offices are today, but it's not the same part of the building. They tore a quarter of that building down to build the bank. And the background is the Methodist Church, the Episcopal Methodist Church. You see the the uh, steeple of the church. It's a nice photograph. And the inner urban railroad track going down the middle of the street. Rich, can you describe this one for me too, please? Yeah, that, that's if we were standing in the middle of the street, uh, right where Grand Street is, right from here, and looking to the east, on the left hand side, that building with the lights on is Blackbeard Hardware Store. Next to it, where the now part of the old Prague, that little building, was Ohio Power. And next to that was a restaurant. I don't know what it was at the time, it became a little different things over time, uh, but it's the old Prague today. And on the far right, the closest to us, was a split uh, building uh, 
on one part, you can't, you can't see that part, but there's a sign there. It was uh, the newest gear shop in the Western Reunion in the Liberty Theater. It had the old Vermillion Bank. And that little building, I'm not sure what was in there. And then Lighthizers and then Old Cotton. <coughs> and then, of course, the bank on the building. And then Columbus. That's a nice photograph. You can't see it too well here. Go back to the previous photo, Rich. What was the? There was a a place that was next to the library where you could get. It was food. It was a small diner. They had. Was it called Darby's? Did you get ice cream there? And where? Back in the fifties, I, I, I remember. Yeah. White on, the, the white on the right hand side. Yeah, it was just to. It was in that so space. It's not, it's not in that picture. It's not in this picture. No. So on the left side, so it's it was nice. Goody Goody Bar. Bar. Yes, that That's was it. Thank you. I was thinking. Uh, okay, because this was just this way. Yeah. 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 I know. Right. Yeah. They tore that down, Jim, and yeah. built yeah. the yeah. storage yeah. there. On the left, you can't see it. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't remember the name of it. Thank you. That was from Little Walk. understand those were Kishman fish nets, right? Yeah, if the, if the condos aren't worth the, weren't where they are today, you'd be able to stand in Exchange Park and see out through the harbor. <coughs> Margaret's uh, bought a solution for that deal when they put those condos up. Those <laughs> down. Like cannons in the park. <laughs> <laughs> the solution was to load it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this one was a black and white one. Back in the day, people used to take pictures and put them on postcards. This is one my dad took. I understand they have good fish dinners for on Fridays. That's what we heard today. <laughs> This is Mittawaga, it's not that far away. And I, up besides the postcard, in one of my yard sale or searches, I found the little salt and pepper shakers. And there's a little sticker, Mittawaga, Ohio. I thought they're coming home with me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, the Alberta Inn, such a tragedy. I've got a chip but it's useless now for a free drink. <laughs> a pen and a t-shirt. And it doesn't say anything on the back, it's just a little bit on the front. But that's okay, because it's never gonna be there again. And I got it. Awesome. I think it was 2011, the, it had the fire, it was almost 100 years old. And Fisher Funeral Home. I treasure this pen. It's just a silly little pen, but Pam and Ed Still Fisher, it's Riddle, it's Riddle Funeral Home now. Pam and Ed, her husband, were my friends, and she gave me that pen. I used to do her hair back, way back when I was a hairdresser, and you wouldn't believe it now. <laughs> but, um, you did just her hair? No, um, I have a card 
from Mary Avery's or matchbook and a card. Mary Avery's Charm Shop. She was on Sandusky Street with a little beauty shop behind her house, or in her house, but in the back. She had all of old vermilion. Um, Pauline Meany, Betty Sharpnick, Pam Fisher. When I started doing hair and curls were in, I mean, it was the 70s and Buffons and Cascades. And when I went to work for Mary, I was doing pin curls. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the little old ladies, they wanted their hair to last two weeks. <laughs> so I did my best. <laughs> But yes, this is Riddle Funeral Home now. And John Ryber, I have a pen from John Ryber. And he was a great guy. Eggland Farms. He had a bowling team that my dad was on. And the two of them ended up at Chapel Creek together. And that was nice. The two of them had their dinners together. After a long, long time, the two of them ended up back together. That was west of town. Tell them what they told you about the eggs. Oh, I asked them one time, because I used to eat with them almost every day. I would sit at the table with them. And I asked them how long eggs last. And he said, if you're baking a cake, you need a fresh egg. But he said, otherwise, if they look good, smell good, use them. <laughs> okay, this is the rusty nail at Cass Villa. Right on the curve, there used to be a bar. It was called The Huddle. And my husband's mother and his stepfather ran it. And then my husband and a lady that had the lemon tree went in together and they had, I've got their liquor license and it covers 3-2 beer and the, and the high. But what was strange about this, we moved to Florida for just a couple years and when we came back, my brother had gone to a yard sale and he found that. I couldn't believe it, so we got it, got it back. And I had a pen from the rusty nail too, and I'm thinking it doesn't work. It looks like somebody really smashed it somewhere. And George Roberts. That one, let's see, just a pen. The pen is George Roberts Arco service station. And I have to check my notes, but I've got, he had the Arco station by the police station, and then a shell station in the library parking lot. And back then it was full service. You pulled in and they cleaned your windows while they were pumping your gas. That was nice. And then it's Sinclair. Okay, my husband Frank was pretty much manager. This is Woodstock now, and I've got his bowling shirt. All right. <laughs> no. I know, it even says Frank. Awesome. <laughs> it needs ironing or I'd have hung it up. But yeah, good old lemon tree lounge. And it's changed hands quite a few times. Did he work for Dick Macklin? No, Macklin had sold it. He had sold it. Yeah, I think he came in right after Macklin, late 60s, early 70s. Mm -hmm. And that was the Sun Fun Swim Club. Yeah, Hope I missed side. I can't even hear it. Harry Peck, I'm hearing it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, Richard Hunt was a coach, teacher. He signed all of this. I took lessons and I've got my pins 
to prove I can dive and I can't. <laughs> it was like if mom and dad paid the money, like you're good to go. <laughs> I could swim, but that one is kind of silly because I can't dive. <laughs> and Hawkins, I found it with my mom. Like I said, most of it's my parents and grandparents. Blotters were in, and this is a blotter from Hawkins Flowers. That's where the Encore shop is now. Mm -hmm. <clears> okay, <throat> hey, Lake Erie Restaurant. That was the same as Happy Days. That was a place to go to buzz the kids bumper to bumper. And not just weekends, I understand. But good fish. And their son was Bryce Needing. Another good guy, old vermilion. He passed away, and I have his, whoops, he had an insurance agency towards the end. His parents sold the restaurant. Okay, this was my first job. I worked in the office at McCune Coglin, and that was right downtown. Let's see, that would be. Chamber of Commerce, I think. Chamber, Chamber of, of Commerce, Commerce office. Paul Meisel. Oh, Mac yeah, McCune Coglin was down. Do you know, Rich, which one that is? Was down a little bit. Isn't that the OAMP building? No. 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 Uh, just to the east of it. A&T. I don't know if it was next to it. Maybe yeah. where that popcorn shop is. Yes. Yeah. There's no rain bonnet in it, but there's a container. And I've got a pencil for scoring and a place maker, probably from a banquet that was my mom's from 1960. And that what I remember Saturday nights, my mom and dad bowled on a couples team. And my friend John, you know, Patty Linka, mm -hmm. graduated together. Al Glinka was her dad and Jerry Super. I think they were joint owners. And I just remember it takes me back to a little bottle of ginger beer and stick pretzels. And that was Saturday night. Those are the days when they allowed smoking in there, too. A little too much smoking, I think. Yeah, you could always tell when you came home you had to clean your clothes. Mill Manor. I've got three decks of cards, and I, my memories of Mill Manor aren't sharp at all. But somewhere along the line, my parents went there. Two of the decks aren't even open. Yeah, but all the people in the 50s, they all played cards. Had your neighbors over, had your friends over, and in our family reunions, we had poker parties. <laughs> One of my favorite items, Crow Lumber. It's a magnifying letter opener. And I've got a booklet, How to Redo Your Attic. And that's the slanted ceiling. And I also found two books on shore lumber. And the address is Beulah Beach. And I understand they moved after Beulah Beach. Definitely 50s. <laughs> Who doesn't remember smelling the brine when you turn the corner? Just a cap, it's not an original jar, but it's the pickle work. And McGarvey's. All I had was a matchbook cover. 
And my brother Lee had the glass, the official McGarvey's glass. And who doesn't remember Eddie Solomon coming around table hopping? How you doing? And for kids, the treasure chest, if you cleaned your plate, mm -hmm. they had the big treasure chest. And on the way out, you could pick a toy, probably a whistle. <laughs> Ferguson's, way be before my time. Uh, Vermillion's pool hall. And we're thinking he had like three, three lanes to bowl. We're thinking two pool tables. So one might have been a snooker yeah. table. Does anybody know what snooker is? Mm -hmm. The farm of two I don't know what it is. on the same side as Woodstock, down farther. On that. And this, I've got two rain bonnets from Dick, ba Dick Baker Dodge. It used to be Walker Dodge. And I just, wonder if this was incentive to buy a car. <laughs> like, here's your rain bonnet. Well, now they have rebates. But I'm sure you were supposed to put them in your glove compartment, and that was a reminder when you needed a car, go to Dick Baker. On my Willie Beer. Willie Beer towel. The 24th. I'm thinking my mom might have used it because the paint's wearing a little bit, but it's fun to have. And Festival of the Fish. I don't know how old the necklace is, but this was mine. Somewhere along the line, I got my Fish Festival necklace. But I've got a picture of the queen. And this is 1968. There was no fanfare, no pageant. The Vermilion May Queen automatically was the Fish Festival Queen. Who was it then? That year was Debbie Darrow. And Erie County Bank. I have an old checkbook. And I had the piggy bank, and my mom had the car. And the car still has the key because that was my mom's. <laughs> yeah, mine doesn't have a key. <laughs> Crystal Beach, what can you say? Our, when they tore this roller coaster down, our dad went and got some of the wood to repair our garage in Alberta. They were throwing it away, it was piled up, so he brought some of that old rotten wood home. <laughs> you want to show him the, the dog? Mom's attic forever. I could not prove it was Crystal Beach, but I'm sure uh, there's a sh one little iota. It could be Cedar Point, no, but Crystal. Crystal Beach was the place to go. Cedar Point was like a one once in a year trip, and this is probably what started me collecting figurines. And every couple of years, my dad would make another shelf in my room for my knickknacks and figurines. And again, she's not marked, but this I know was from the fish pond. I wasn't skilled, it didn't take skill. You took the little net and you scooped up the fish 
And this is one of my treasures. I have some tickets from Crystal Beach. And these I saw, I'm an autograph collector. And these I saw at the Goodwill, and I went nuts. And then when I looked at them, they're from Crystal Beach. They've been cut, and they're reproductions. And I don't know, I know Pat Villa, George Villa's wife, probably Marlene Feldkamp. I know they had all the original ones, and I asked Pat Villa one time if she was interested in selling any. And she said no, she was going to keep them forever. So I'm thinking maybe after she passed, the family had a different thinking. But I bought them anyway, even as reproductions. I mean, Tommy Dorsey, Louis Armstrong. <laughs> and I didn't put them in my collection because they are reproductions. But I'm thinking I'll put them in an album and definitely label them as reproductions because you can read the, the 19, whatever, you can read it right on the back. <laughs> Here they were reproduced. That's where the old roller skating rink was, mm -hmm. there. And Dairy Delight in front of Crystal Beach. It was Heberling's ice cream store. It might be the only spoon in existence. <laughs> but in the 50s, 60s, families went on picnics and you needed plastic silverware, so if it was free. So, and Wakefield Brass, I have a parts bag. And my dad worked at Thu Shovel, and he had a couple of these that said Thu Shovel, but it said parts bag. So other, I would have never identified it, except I can, it's the same exact bag, except the labeling. This one is from Wakefield Brass. Penny was young then. <laughs> <laughs> A and W group beer. Yes, I'm, I don't know if you were Sharon. Um, Halloween trick or treating in Alberta Beach. Alberta. You'd go to the root beer stand and you got a baby beer. Yeah. And you weren't supposed to take the glasses home. <laughs> <laughs> but there were so many kids, and I ended up with a baby beer mug. That was the the Coinet family. That's our brother Reed. Uh, really? In our Oh my gosh, that's Reed? That's Reed. I never thought of it. Reed was still, yeah. How come she picked up on that and you didn't? Reed no. Reed oh. It is Mari. <laughs> that's our Thunderbird. <laughs> I thought it was Elvis. It's a nice Thunderbird. <laughs> you get a quart for 25 cents. <laughs> I'm Miss Carhops. You pull up and they take your order and bring it to you. Okay, Liberty Tavern was Stan and Irene Kowalski, and they lived behind the bar, right in the back. And I don't know how I asked so much from Liberty Tavern. <laughs> I, really, I mean, two ashtrays, a cap, a bottle opener, I've got a keychain and a mug. You only gave those out to good customers. <laughs> well, I used to play 66 with my landlord's chair. But I'm thinking my husband, you probably pick some stuff up there too. Stan likes us. <laughs> but now, yeah, now it's Rudy's Bar and Grill. That's a good place. And I have a few other items. This is my husband's drawing. Um, he's quite an artist, but it's a sketch he did Miles Schilling, Vermillion's Taxi Service, mm -hmm. and next to it was Pat Weisgarver Antiques on Grand Street. Oh, and John Crook just brought us these before it was the taxi stand. It was John Cook, your grandfather. No, my dad. Your dad? Okay. He had that building before they, he moved to 
the um, space that is now SOS Wines. Okay. So Vermilion Photo Journal went in right after my dad, wow. out of the early 60s. We did not know that. Thank you for bringing it. Sure. It was uh, painted by Frank Barthel. Oh. That's cool. Now, do you display, display this, or you had to dig it out of an attic? No, I have it down in my, my wall next to my pool table and stuff like that. <laughs> I always knew I liked you. <laughs> Classmates, it's just... Okay, I have unmarked a little plastic cup that says, has a little piece that says vermilion. I think this was my husband's sister. It's a wooden wall plaque of the Last Supper, and on the back is marked vermilion, and that possibly could be Crystal Beach. It looks like a, something that would come from there. A pocket knife, pearlized pocket knife, made in the USA. And it's got a brass plate that says vermilion, and I would love to know where that came from, but I don't. And Gastown by the shopping center. It tickled me when I found the book. You got one stamp for every 10 cents of gas. That wouldn't happen today, I know that. But the book was worth $1.50 in gas when you filled it up. And the wood, the wood blocks, these aren't old. These are like from the 90s, the cat's meow. But I was at a, I think it was the Lions had a sale out by Lucy Idol. And a lady had tons of these. And I've got the Crystal Beach and the Town Hall. See, that one's a Town Hall. This one's Swenson's. And then the Ritter Library. And those, although they're not old, they tickled me. So it's another one of those coming home with me things. <laughs> okay, so that. Pretty much, I, oh, Paul Meisel, let's not forget Paul Meisel, where the Chamber of Commerce is, had his tax service. And I have their pen, and I do believe they did my parents' taxes. So that's pretty much it, and feel free if you want to come up and, and look at anything. I don't... Yeah, I mean, the books too, I mean, feel free. Some of them are a little fragile and that's okay. They're to be looked at and enjoyed. So I thank you so much for putting up with me. Next month on the Tuesday, the April 23rd is Tom Mose um, talking about fast boats, dazzling pearls, faster boats, and the results in ripples in vermilion. It's about bootlegging and the boats that came through that um, he also talked about in the pictures of his restoration of the Dodge Water Car. So that'll be next month. And if anybody wants to sign up um, and put your email address on, we'll let you know when our next programs are. So if you didn't do it last month, you can do it today. Thanks.